Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to complete the subscription process to allow our application to emit notifications. We are going to have a look at the push subscription object that we are going to get back from the browser and we are going to understand better how web push notifications work in general. Let's then go back to our call to request subscription. This is going to get us back a promise. So we're going to call dot then on it. And this promise is going to emit here the subscription value. If the subscription is successful, we are going to be needing this subscription object. Let's have a look at it. We are going to print it out to the console to see what it looks like. We also want to handle the case when the subscription does not go through successfully. And in that case, we want to add here a catch block to our promise. We are going to simply, in this case, log the console error to the screen. We're going to log here the error cause. Let's then go ahead and try this code. We're going to start by incrementing here the version number. So it's going to be version 9. We're going to head over to our terminal and we're going to make sure that we start our application in production mode. With version 9 up and running, let's go ahead and trigger the subscription process. We're going to open here the console to have a look at the subscription object. Let's go ahead and hit subscribe. As we can see, we now get this pop-up, show notifications. We're going to click allow. And as we can see, we now have here the notification subscription object, meaning that the then clause was executed and the promise was evaluated successfully. If we have a look here at the subscription object in more detail, we're going to see that we have here an endpoint property and a couple of other properties here, such as, for example, user visible only true. These are certain default properties of the push subscription that we are going to go over now. One of the properties is the application server key. This is another form of writing the vapid public key. Another property that we see here defined is the expiration time. In this case, we have not defined it here at the level of the request subscription. Otherwise, this property would also show populated here. Another property that we have here is user visible only true. This means that the web push messages that are going to be sent using this subscription are guaranteed to always result in visible content shown to the user. The most important property maybe it's the endpoint. Let's have a look. This is a URL that is pointing to the Google Fire Cloud messaging service at googleapis.com. As we can see, the last part of this URL is a unique identifier. This unique identifier identifies this particular Chrome browser instance to the Google Fire Cloud messaging infrastructure, which is the server which is in charge of pushing push notifications to all Chrome browser instances. This means that web push messages do not come directly from our server. They arrive at the browser via a service that is under the control of the browser manufacturer. This ensures from the point of view of the provider of the browser, such as for example Google in the case of Chrome, that they have control over the notification user experience. So if there is an application that is showing too many notifications to the users, the Fire Cloud messaging service would be able to blacklist certain sites from sending notifications providing very disruptive user experiences because too many notifications that can be very distracting to the end user. In the particular case of the Chrome web browser, it's Firebase Cloud Messaging, the backend service that pushes messages to the browser. In the case of Firefox, that's going to be a different service under the control of Mozilla. And in general, each browser will have a corresponding backend service that it uses to push notifications to the user. This is not configurable by the developer, so we cannot specify here an endpoint property and override this. This is defined by the browser and cannot be changed. So if we want to show a push notification to this browser instance, what do we have to do? We have to send the message that we want to send to this endpoint here, which uniquely identifies the browser instance. We add the text of the message that we want to display. And this backend service, Firebase Cloud Messaging, in this case, will eventually push the notification to this browser instance. This means that in order to be able to send notifications, the first thing that we need to do is to take this subscription object and send it to our server. 
it's from our server that we are going to trigger notifications. Notifications cannot be triggered here from the client. This means that the first thing that we need to do with this push subscription object is to send it to the server where we will be able to use it. 